Hello everybody, this is Ben and let's look into what are top level statements in C Sharp or TLS for short. So I've created a console application and I've called it TLS demo and it has a program.cs and the only thing this application is going to do is that it is going to print hello world to the console. And program.cs has the namespace uh, TLS demo. Uh, it has a class declared which is program and of course it has the uh, main method which is the entry point of this application. So with the introduction of TLS, a dev or a coder is no longer required to write the namespace, the program or the class and the entry point of a project explicitly. It becomes the job of the compiler to do it for us. What does that mean? I can start by removing all the unnecessary code which the compiler is going to generate for me during the compilation process and I can concentrate on the actual meat of the code. So let's just delete uh, the namespace and the class and the entry point of the method. So I'm left with only the console.write line. And if I were to build this and if I were to run this application, it would just run perfectly fine. Why? Because TLS is going to do the job of injecting uh, the namespace, the class associated to it, and the entry point of a method during the compilation process. So it is not TLS who is doing it, but it is actually the compiler which uses TLS to do the job for us. And there are certain points which we need to be aware when we are using a TLS. So those are actually mentioned in the official documentation. And I can also leave uh, the link to the official documentation in the description. And uh, let's just take a peek at those points one by one. So to start with, the first point mentions that a project can contain only one file using the TLS state or the top level statement. So what does that mean? So in this application, if you see, there is program.cs and it uses uh, top level statements. What happens if I go and create another class and try to use TLS feature? So let's give it a try. Let's just uh, call this class another TLS and uh, let's delete all the code that got generated and and use TLS hello from another class. So what happens here is that in this project now I have two classes or two files which are ideally trying to use TLS. So let's build it and if I were to build it I right away get an error stating that a project can only contain one top level statement. So this by design is forbidden when we use TLS. So let's quickly delete uh, the another TLS file so that the project does not break. And let's go to the second point. The second point states that no other entry points are, uh, are allowed. So what this basically means is that every project has its own entry point. So console application in this case, this uh, is the entry point of the application. And uh, there are no main code being typed by the developer or even the class associated with it because these things are going to be generated by the compiler using the TLS feature. So what happens if I were to go and create another class and try to add uh, a new method and try to add the main method there? Let's just give it a try. And the class with, let's call it another class with main.cs. And delete the constructor. And let's add void main. And what happens if I build now? So the project does build. But if you notice, the compiler does throw an error, throw a warning. And the warning says that the entry point of the program is global code, ignoring uh, the class name dot main from the project, from the class which we created now. So this is the second point which the docs mention that if I were to create another main method in another namespace, it, it, it is going to get ignored and the global code which is generated as part of TLS is going to be the entry point of that application. So basically what it means is that I can no longer have multiple entry points and specify which is going to be the actual entry point. 
that is no longer supported as part of TLS. So let's uh, take a peek at the third point, which says that using the dire directive must come first. So what, what, what does that mean? So ideally what it means that all the using statements that we are going to use should be declared at the start of the file. So this is correct, but this is wrong. So this does not, this is not supported by design. So there is another thing which you have to keep in mind is with the guidelines to say it's something about using directive must come first. So let's kind of like take a detour here to, un to understand another feature, which is, which I think is really cool. So uh, let's open the CS proj file for this specific console application. And if you see line number six, it says there is an attribute added called as implicit usings. And if you see, it is actually enabled by default. So this is kind of interesting because what the compiler would do when we explicitly enable this feature is that it is going to inject a set of using statements to the global code. So what does that mean? So if you notice console dot write line, I have not added the system namespace here in this project. So how did it know or how will the namespace get resolved? It is actually during the compilation process and it is also and it is also using the implicit using statement. So what it does is that it is going to inject a set of using statements uh, and it and the number of using statements are going to vary based upon the project uh, type. So I uh, looked at the documentation again and uh, the documentation for, uh, for TLS in the Microsoft portal does mention that when I use a console application, these are actually the set of using statements that are going to be injected uh, to every class. And this is kind of very similar to the global using statement. So uh, if you're aware that uh, c -sharp has a feature called as global using statements. So uh, global using statements uh, are used when we need to use that specific namespace across multiple files. So that would actually remove a lot of redundant code. So maybe let's quickly uh, take a peek there. Uh, let's just call it global name space.cs so uh, using let's just add another namespace tls and what i can do is i can actually mark this statement as global this becomes valid Let's just call it one and let's just call it one. Okay, so, and the order is important here. So let's just pull this up and it should work. So what this is going to do is that TLS demo one, which is a namespace becomes globally applicable to all the files inside the project. So if I were to come back here to program Dot CS. I can technically create a new object so what was the name uh, of the class okay so it was global uh, namespace let's So if you see, I'm not adding any namespace to this specific class file because this has been declared as global. And uh, all the files inside this project can access uh, all the functions or the methods that are part of the namespace without explicitly, explicitly declaring it uh, in uh, the class. So, that's, uh, so that is what a global using statement is. So coming back, 
so coming back to the using uh, directive and it does mention that we should actually mention all the using statements at the top of the file and since we have marked this project as in with the uh, with implicit using keywords enabled what it is going to do is that it is going to inject all these using statements to uh, as a global using statement so this kind of varies with project to project and for for the console application these are the using statements that are going to be declared as global so if it's uh, a .NET Core MVC application, the type of using statements that are going to be declared are going to be different compared to the console application. So that was just a small detail there. And coming back, uh, yeah, and the fourth point is that uh, global namespace by default. So what does that mean? So the project uh, or the statements that we write are going to be part of a global uh, namespace which is in this case this is going to be TLS demo and let's say that I'm actually creating a class or a type let's quickly create a public class person and add two properties to it maybe first name okay if I R S T first name And uh, last name. So uh, this is a type which has been created, and this is person. And let's uh, go to another class. And what happens if I try to create a new object for the type which I created? So if you see, this has become the person object is accessible even without me declaring the using statement and even i don't even have to add this using statement because this is getting injected uh, as part of the implicit uh, directive that we have used yep and the next So the, the fifth point is that the namespace and the type definition must come after TLS. So ideally what that means is that if I were to declare uh, a type, um, in this case, this is person, it should always come after I use the TLS statement. So if I, if I try to declare or if I try to write this above a TLS statement, this is, this is wrong and it won't work because it is by design forbidden. So ideally what we are required to do is that I need to write uh, all my types and all uh, my namespaces after uh, the TLS. So I can also add a, a namespace here and call it another namespace, person name space. So this is also correct. And let's quickly move the class within the scope of the namespace. And this is correct, and this is also acceptable as part of TLS, but right now this is going to break because we need to manually add the namespace associated to it, which is the person's namespace. Yeah, and let's look at the uh, other point, which is point number six. It says uh, ARGS is available to use and it's not null. So uh, if you look at the console application, a console application always has uh, a main method and the main method would have a parameter which is ARGS which takes in the value that we sent from the command line and it is going to hold all the parameters that we sent from the CLI. So when we use CL, uh, TLS, we actually have access to the ARGS variable and it is actually available to us and it is never null which means that we don't have to check for null but we can actually check for its count so args is also available to us and we are not required to write uh, any we are not required to create another variable for that so and the last point here is that the entry point gets generated based on the statement that we use so what does that mean 
So by entry point, I mean the main method that is going to get injected to the uh, file that uses TLS. So you have to understand that every uh, TLS file does not generate the same entry point. It actually gets generated based on certain uh, factors or the certain statements that we use. So uh, if my TLS contains uh, an await and a return, Ideally, the entry point that gets generated or the signature of the entry point would be this. It would be a task of int and it would be main. If it contains only await, it is going to be a task and which returns none, And but it is a main object. If I'm not using uh, async or await, but it is just a return, it would be a static int of main. And if there are no await or no return, it is just going to be a void uh, method. So yeah, this is TLS, so have fun. Thank you. And if you find this video useful, so be sure to subscribe and hit the like button.